Chef Buck here and today we're going to cook up some canned corned beef and cabbage. Everybody loves canned meat. Meat is delicious. I mean if you're out hunter gathering meat. Mm. The only thing that makes meat better is when it's in a can. Eh. Now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pot and I'm going to turn my heat on medium high and we'll start to heat up a little bit of oil. I'm just going to put a splash of canola oil in there but use your preferred oil. I like to use a small head of cabbage. This is a little bigger than I like to use, so I'm gonna use this much onion. You know, usually just one small head of cabbage and one large onion will suffice. But this is kind of a medium-sized onion and some bits and bobbles, which might add up to another medium-sized onion. This is turning into math. But I'll have the recipe written down below or you can go over to my, myfoodchannel.com and print out all our recipes. I'm gonna cut the onion up into some pretty big chunky chunks because we want our dish to have a lot of texture so you don't have to cut them up too small. And we're gonna cook it for a while so it'll cook down. I think our oil is all heated up. This is some caraway seed. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of that in here. Boom, boom, boom. And then we'll toss in all of our chopped onion. We'll mix the onion around in the oil then we'll go ahead and give that a little bit of a head start while we chop up the rest of our veggies. And we're just gonna give our carrots a rough chop. Just as long as everything is cut into a kind of a uniform size, it'll work out. And you just don't want it to be too small. We want it to be a rustic dish. And we'll follow our carrot in here. Now we'll chop up our cabbage. Now you can use the core in your corned beef and cabbage. You can just chop it up and add it in there minutely. But camera girl, she has a uh, cabbage core fetish. So anyway, she'll gnaw on this. So we'll set this aside as a treat for her. So now our cabbage, we're just going to chop that up into some rough sizes. You don't have to chop your cabbage up too small because we're going to be cooking it down quite a bit. And even though this is a little more cabbage than I usually use, that's alrighty because I like to cook it down until a lot of the moisture is cooked out of the cabbage. So it'll reduce quite a bit. All right, let's check on our onions. Let me throw a little pepper in here. It's just some ground black pepper. Is that a lot? Yeah, it's a lot. But we're committed, you know, whatever comes out in my hand is what we got to use. Salt, boom, we got a lot of veggies going in here. Now I got a little bit of garlic. This is like five cloves minced garlic so my onions have been cooking for about five minutes now i'm going to throw my cabbage in here that's enough of a head start holy smokes that's a lot of cabbage i usually use a smaller cabbage but this will work it's gonna work there's no wrong way you just got to get the balance of vegetables to meat to a ratio that you can live with that you can be happy with so i'm going to take about a cup of water now and add that in here. I'm gonna raise the temperature back up to high. And we'll throw a lid on here and let it simmer away for a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn my skillet onto medium high heat. And then we're gonna go ahead and sear our corned beef. So let's open up our canned corned beef. So there's a key on the side of the can. Turn it upside down. Flip it over on the thingamabob. Then give it a twisty, twisty, twist, and it's going to open up with no problem, no problemas. You know, nine times out of ten. If you do have a problem with the key, if the key busts on you, uh, I'll post another video somewhere around here with instructions on how to get out of that dilemma. Boop, boop. But there we go. Beautiful can o meat. Oops, I forgot to poke a hole in this side here, which is supposed to uh, create a scientific thing, you know, to make it easier to come out. Alrighty, so we have got our brick, our log o beef. And I had this in the fridge, this can o meat. So it's a little easier to slice. Alright, let's take a peek at our veggies. They're bubbling and steaming away. So we've given them a little bit of a head start with some uh, water. Still some water in there, see camera girl? But I just wanted to give them a little bit of a steamy start. And now I'm going to continue to cook them for quite a while uncovered. My skillet is hot, hot, hot. Probably too hot, but that's life. And we want to get a nice sear on here. Now it would be nice, you know, just to cook this all together in one pot. 
you know, to add the meat at the beginning and sear it and then add all your veggies in there and let it all cook together. Sounds nice. Definitely would be more convenient. You'd have less dirty dishes, but it won't taste as good. You know, I've done it like that and I've done it like this and this is the way to go. Cook your meat separately and then add it at the end. Flavor punch, baby. Trust me. So lame. Definitely cutting that part out. You want to make sure and get a nice sear on your meat. It's going to add a great flavor and it's going to hold your meat together into some nice chunky chunks. So I'm going to put my meat on medium heat and I'm going to leave my, uh, my pot of veggies here on medium high. I got some Italian seasoning. You want to put about a tablespoon in there. That looks about right. Now I got my handy dandy measuring spoon here because camera girl doesn't like it if I put too much vinegar in here. So I'm going to just do two tablespoons of plain Jane vinegar. This is just a rice vinegar, which is a little milder than a lot of vinegars. And then I'm going to add in some Worcestershire sister sour sauce, which is mostly vinegar as well, but it adds a great flavor and about two tablespoons of that. Stir that vinegar around into our cabbage. Canned corned beef is already cooked. You know, you can eat it right out of the can. So all we're doing right here is getting a nice sear. Now I'm gonna separate the meat into some chunky chunks. So you wanna make sure that it has a nice sear on it before you do this. I'm gonna turn them over and get a nice sear on some of the sides that aren't seared. And this pan's already hot enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and just let that sit there and sear away a little bit longer. And now all we're waiting for is for more of the water to cook out of the cabbage here. And as soon as this cooks down to a consistency I like, I'll go ahead and add the meat to it. Then that'll be it. So we'll let this cook away and we'll check on it in just a wee little bit. See you then. Beep, 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 beep. Can you get down in there, camera girl? Now you see there's no water in the bottom here anymore. You know, we cooked a lot of the moisture out of this cabbage. That's what I like. I don't like a wet corned beef and cabbage. So I got my skillet off. I'm going to turn my pot off there. So now we just want to toss our beef in with our cabbage. See, and look at those nice seared chunks of meat. So we've got nice seared meat mixed in with this kind of dry cooked cabbage. If you add the beef in too early or if you cook it all together, then it gets almost soupy. And even if you sear the meat early on, it kind of loses that sear. It loses that flavor. Then it just kind of gets very mushy. And I don't like that kind of corned beef cabbage. You know, I like it like this here. I like it kind of dry with a lot of meaty flavor. Even though it's not a lot of meat, we just use one can of corned beef but it kind of gets all throughout there. And I added like a half a teaspoon of salt early on. And you can adjust the seasoning and add more salt if you like. But there's a lot of salt in the canned corned beef. Look how rustic that looks. You know, we got some nice chunks of carrot in there. You just want to make sure and not chop up your veggies too small. Well, that's all there is to it. Nice chunks of carrot and cabbage. If you want to take a look at this recipe, I'll have it written down below. There's a link down there. You can go to myfoodchannel.com, print out all our recipes. Thanks for watching and subscribing. We'll see you next weekend. Bye-bye.